You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. <laughs> My name is Rob. And uh, sorry for not being serious, we're being serious. Thank you for being with us. I don't know what episode number this is, so we're just gonna roll with it. Because yeah. we're recording this not in our normal place, therefore we're a little off kilter, at least I am. You seem like you're doing just fine. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. <laughs> but anyways, I think you're doing just fine. we don't know what episode it is, but we're glad to be here. Thank you for being with us, as always. Thank appreciate it. Thank you for being with us. On our drive down to Texas, I actually got a phone call with questions concerning the upcoming mapping training at the NTSB Training Academy. Now, DroneU and PIX40 are working really hard to create a very unique and thorough training experience for pilots to actually fly three separate missions. You're gonna fly a crash from a Cessna, you're gonna fly a scene from a helicopter, and you're gonna practice your search and rescue skills and the ability to map a search and rescue scene as well. But the thing is that PIX4D is changing a little bit of their curriculum. They're taking it deeper for crash scene mapping. And my question that I got on the phone while I was driving down here to Texas was all about, you know, Rob, if I'm going to this training, you know, is it for advanced users? Is it for intermediate guys? And I said, yes, it's definitely for advanced users and intermediate guys. And he asked if he, we would be going over things like ground control points and GPS and how to use it and all that. Well, I, it was actually from somebody who had been to a, a PIX40 class, right? Uh -huh. And they were saying, is there more is yeah. there a reason for me to go to this? Yeah, they were if saying, I've, already been. I've already gone to a PIX4D public safety training. How is it different? Well, it's different in that we're going deep into the workflow of, ex of explicitly just for crash scene mapping. I'm having trouble speaking here today. Um, I'm not really sure what it is, but the thing excited is- excited for Worst Fest, but anyway. I am very excited for Worst Fest. All right, so the secret is we're going to Worst Fest in an hour. <laughs> we have to finish these two episodes before we go. That was the deal. So I'm just trying to get them done, but I want to no, provide, no, no, provide value to you guys as well. I don't want to waste right. your time. Quality control is still in place. Thank you, Rob, for clarifying that. Yes, I'm glad everyone knows. <laughs> So anyway, the question was, how is it different? Well, we're going, we're deep diving into the workflow. We're also going into the acquisition strategies that are gonna be necessary, but are also used by those who are mapping at the NTSB. So you're gonna be learning from, you know, experienced guys who do this all the time. It's, it's honestly a once in a lifetime opportunity. And you know, to answer his question, yeah, we're gonna go a lot deeper than the regular public safety class offered by PIX4. Well, also you're marrying in one training, the acquisition strategies and that whole part of the process with processing all in one three day intensive situation where you're going to be able to put it all together with the right people there helping you do so. So, I mean, I, I, while I'm sure the uh, PIX4D trainings were phenomenal, this is definitely taking it to another level. It definitely is taking it to another level. Check out our website, droneu.education, and then scroll down to the little wheel. You'll see events. Click that. Go to December, and in December, you'll see the NTSB training, and you can get more details yourself. We've had a lot of requests for purchase orders for public safety officers um, and departments alike. I will say, guys, if you really want to get into highly accurate mapping and modeling, this is also a great opportunity for you as well. This is not just for public safety, guys. It's a great opportunity for a lot of people who are in public safety, but fortunately, this information can be applied for a variety of of different applications. This particular time, we're just gonna take it deeper than just mapping and going into the deep dives of high accuracy by going through the workflow of crash scene mapping. So really excited. I wanna talk your ears off on that. So let's go ahead and get into today's question, which is brought to you by our fabulous community. Hey guys, it's Michael again. How have you been? So my nine to five wants me to fly their drone for them. My only issue is the guy that's been flying for the last year for them has flown in unauthorized airspace without receiving authorization on multiple occasions. The DJI they have will reflect this even though he has never actually logged a flight. So a scenario I have thought of, I'm on a job and God forbid something goes wrong to the point where the FAA has to get involved. At what point would the FAA start to pull records? If they did, they would see that this particular machine has flown in unauthorized airspace on multiple occasions. Would they ask me to produce proof of authorization for these flights? At which point, I couldn't because no authorization has ever been given. As the remote pilot in command at the time, I feel this would fall on me. 
I'm thinking of telling my employer that they need to get me my own drone so that I can start off right and log my flights and get and receive authorizations. What are your opinions? I really appreciate this, guys. I really value your opinions. Have a great week, yeah? Michael, thank you. Appreciate the question very, very much, guys. If you have a question, don't forget to go to askdroneu.com. We'd love to hear from you. And this is a really interesting question. I think he brings up a very valid point. He does bring up a very valid point. And it reminded me of, you know, Bill's story of, of investigating the pilot who had flown into the Black Hawk helicopter in New York City. And I'm not sure if you remember that. It was about from a year ago. And if you guys remember the details of that story, they had actually found a motor from the Phantom. And when they found the motor from the Phantom, they had the serial number on the Phantom. Well, I'm sure someone said, hey, DJI, which serial number and which pilot is this? Yeah. Which, well, we know that happened. We also know that they were able to gather from the, from the flight controller and from the user account of this Incredible. pilot that he had flown beyond visual line of sight. He had flown in areas before that beyond visual line of sight and it was very easy at least seeing this on my perspective as a third party i think it's very easy to say that you could say based on the data of this pilot who has regularly flown mm -hmm. in beyond visual line of sight that his um risk management skills are not really there and oh, that's a very nice way of saying it well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maturity is definitely a powerful thing. <laughs> yes, um, no, but I mean, I, look, could you induce if, let's say, I regularly break the speed limit over and over and over again, right? Let's say not by five miles an hour or not by 10 miles an hour, which pretty much a lot of people get away with in cities all the time. Right. Um, but let's say 20 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, right? If I do that consistently and regularly, doesn't that say something about my perspective on driving and the risk that I'm willing to take while I drive? Absolutely. Yeah, I think, and, and particularly if that's being recorded and you could monitor, you could go back and see that that has been a pattern. Yeah, that would definitely play into anything that were to happen to that person if, in fact, they did get into a wreck or something. That I would all be very valid information. I that's kind of what we're talking about. progressive snapshot does what it does. Yeah, yeah, don't plug one of those things into your car and if you drive 30 miles over the speed limit. Or brake hard. Or brake hard or other things. Don't ask yeah. me how I know those things. Anyway, <laughs> long story short, um, if look, if I were you and your company has been flying in airspace they shouldn't be flying in, if they have been... Which by the way, I think that's a really good way to put it, is your company has been. Yes, there was an individual who was flying the drone, but the company shouldn't have been allowing that. Correct. They need to have the leadership that knows what how, how things are supposed to happen and then lead and not let it happen. They did, so they are culpable as well. Yes, they are. And the fact that we've actually seen one FAA enforcement against a company rather than an individual and a pilot, I think actually speaks volumes for where the FAA is willing to take enforcement actions. Mm -hmm. Let me put it to you this way. If I were that pilot, if I put myself in his shoes and I knew the NTSB story, the investigation, and I knew other investigations that have been going on, I would not want to be flying a drone that had a record of being flown in airspace that it shouldn't have been flown in because if they were to ever pull that up, it would be really hard to disprove that it wasn't me as the pilot yeah. unless in that data it says, you know, this pilot under this email address logged in here, which I, it may actually say that. Again, I wouldn't trust mm. um, the interpretation or whoever's interpreting that data to interpret it correctly. To, mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and I mean, obviously, I think his employer would say, look, it was a different pilot, so there are mitigating issues that would probably come in and, and save the day, so to speak. But nonetheless, why put yourself in that position if you don't have to? Exactly, and if someone has been willingly taking risks and something were to happen to you and they were to pull the flight controller and see all that data, I don't think it's going to help you. Yeah. So I so, would say it, definitely new drum. Yeah, it's prudent. I think you're thinking along the right lines and definitely would pursue that for sure. Totally, totally. Well, um, that is going to do it for our very short episode today. Um, if you are flying a drone that you bought, maybe it's refurbished, maybe it's bought used. Well, make sure that you have cleared the flight information. I'm not even sure that you can do that. Just buy a new drone. Just buy a new <laughs> drone. Don't play games. It's not worth it. I mean, with the new reauthorization that's coming out, we're going to see a lot more enforcement actions. I think it's very clear just based off of the language that was in the bill. So for me, I'm not taking that risk. You know, my, I love my career. I love what I do. And that's more important to me and more valuable to me 
than risking all of it. Yeah, so. absolutely. All well right, said. guys. Well, thanks again for watching another episode of Ask Drone You. That's going to do it for us today. See you next time.